Let's revisit the molecular geometries we've learned in introductory chemistry with a special focus on those that are most common to organic structures. The basis of this discussion essentially is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VESPER theory. Remember the idea of VESPER is that electron pairs try to get as far apart from one another as they can possibly get in molecules, and this is what dictates molecular geometry. An important concept for this is the idea of an electron pair domain, and we define an electron pair domain as a group of bonding electrons or a non-bonding pair occupying a common region of space between two nuclei or located on one nucleus in the case of a non-bonding lone pair. And these are called electron pair domains. So what I've done on this slide is just listed four different types of electron pair domains that we see. Each of these is considered a single domain, even the double and triple bonds, and that's an important point to keep in mind. So the non-bonding lone pair is considered an electron pair domain in its own right with a total electron count of two. A single bond is similarly its own electron pair domain. It has two total electrons and one bonding pair. The double bond is an electron pair domain that includes both bonds of the double bond. Now we have two bonding pairs and a total of four electrons, and the triple bond is considered an electron pair domain with three bonding pairs and six electrons total. Each of these is considered a single electron pair domain. And the beautiful thing about this concept is that four molecules or groups for which resonance is irrelevant. And this is an important condition. I want to emphasize it now because we'll deal with molecules with resonance in the future and we'll have to deepen our model of molecular geometry just a little bit. But for the time being, the number of e electron pair domains or EPDs around an atom determines their arrangement around that atom. And we give a name to that particular arrangement of electron pair domains around the atom. We're going to call it the electronic arrangement. This is somewhat different than the geometry or shape, as we'll see here shortly. From this idea that the number of electron pair domains determines the geometry, we can list the electronic arrangements corresponding to each number of electron pair domains from 2 to 6. And really quickly here, I want to go through a few examples of molecules that exemplify these arrangements. The first is the molecule beryllium hydride, or BEH2. We've got a central beryllium atom surrounded by two hydrogen atoms with no lone pairs no non-bonding pairs on the beryllium atom. And the geometry here is linear. We can see that there's a 180 degree bond angle between the two BEH bonds. And it's pretty much that simple. The linear geometry places these bonds as far apart as they can possibly get. If we move to three electron pair domains, we get to the trigonal planar arrangement. This arrangement places the three bonds to the central atom at an angle of 120 degrees to each other in a common plane, which we can see from this view. So this is the molecule boron trifluoride. The central boron atom simply has three BF bonds, and that's it, no lone pairs, nothing else like that. And so it, it exemplifies the trigonal planar electronic arrangement. When we move to four electron pair domains, we finally get to the third dimension, and this is the tetrahedral electronic arrangement. Silicon tetrafluoride is a classic example, as is sp3 hybridized carbon, and what we see here is a 109.5 degree bond angle between two adjacent SIF bonds, and an arrangement in which when two of the SIF bonds are in the plane of the screen, one is projected out towards us, and the other projects behind the screen. Organic molecules are typically characterized by these three electronic arrangements. They rarely get to five and six electron pair domains because these necessarily violate the octet rule, since we're dealing with at least five pairs of electrons around the central atom in these structures. What we rigorously call the shape or the molecular geometry about a central atom refers only to the arrangement of atoms around the central atom, in a sense ignoring or obscuring the lone pairs and focusing on the positions of atoms only. So for the linear arrangement, of course, there's really only one possibility, since if A bore a lone pair instead of one of these X atoms, then molecular geometry would be irrelevant. We just have a diatomic situation. But in the trigonal planar geometry, we get to an interesting situation where one of the X's can be replaced by a lone pair. And that leads to a somewhat different looking geometry, at least qualitatively, where in the case where we have one lone pair at the central atom, we have the central atom with the two outer atoms in what's called a bent arrangement with a bond angle here of 120 degrees. And a classic example of this would be something like 
carbene with a lone pair and two CH bonds. The bond angle here is 120 degrees, and this is a bent molecule. The tetrahedral geometry presents the same issue. We could have a situation where all four electron pair domains are associated with bonds. That would be something like CH4 or silicon tetrafluoride. But we can also take one of those X atoms and replace it with a lone pair, and the result in that case would be what's called a trigonal pyramidal geometry. An example of that is the molecule ammonia, which has a central nitrogen atom and a single lone pair on that nitrogen atom with three bonds to hydrogens. And so we have four electron pair domains total, but only three bonds to atoms. And so the geometry manifests itself as a trigonal pyramid with the nitrogen at the top of the pyramid and the hydrogens forming a triangle at the base. The bond angle here is still approximately 109.5 degrees, but the molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal, while the electron group or electronic arrangement is tetrahedral. We can take this process one step further, in fact, and replace one of the other X atoms with yet a second lone pair. And then we get back into a situation where we have two atoms bound to the central atom, and they're at a bond angle that's not 180 degrees. In this case, it would be close to 109.5. The situation in that case would be akin to water, for example. Water has four electron pair domains total, two bonds to hydrogen, two lone pairs. And the molecular geometry, the positions of the atoms alone, looks like a bent shape or bent geometry, thanks to those lone pairs. Hopefully this discussion has helped you see why we distinguish between the electron group arrangement, which takes into account or factors in the locations of the lone pairs, versus the shape, where we look only at the positions of the atoms.